Hare Krishna. Welcome to another I just got out the shower video. Anyway, let's get right to the subject. I like to talk about bodily conceptions, how we look at each other's body and assume that that's the real person. First of all, I'd like to say that there's a lot of people out there who are under the conception, and I'm gonna be straight up. There's a lot of people who are under the conception that the white man does not have a soul. And this is a thing, this is a theory that's been running around for a long time, but I'd just like to address that because I have, forget the fact that I got friends that are white and fellow devotees that are white and forget the fact that I'm in a black body. Let's just look at it for what it really is. Consciousness is the symptom of the presence of the soul. This is taught by Srila Prabhupada. Consciousness is the symptom of the presence of the soul. So if something is conscious, whether it be animate or inanimate, if it has consciousness, it has a soul. It is a living spirit entity. It has a soul. Only a robot wouldn't have a soul, of course. That's natural, but it's controlled by a remote control or it's controlled by a set of algorithms or, or instructions. When it comes to the body of a saint, and when it comes to the body of a demon, the interior portion, the smallest portion is the soul, and that soul is self-same. It's composed of the same kind of material. It's called Saksid Ananda, which is not a material material. It's a spiritual energy. It's called Saksid Ananda. You can look it up. Or Sat Sit Ananda, depending on the spelling. It's the same thing. So, even a demon has a soul. A saintly being has a soul, a demon has a soul. The question is, what is influencing that soul? Is it one of the three modes of material nature, or is it transcendental energy? By default, humans are born in Raja Gunna. Gunna means mode, and Raja means, well, the word Raja means rulership. It's like a king, but this king is always under the mode of passion, are my subjects okay? Is everybody eating? Are the animals growing? Are the, are the crops growing? Are we being invaded? What can I do to prolong my longevity? How can I expand the, 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 the borders of my land for my subjects? You know what I'm saying? This is the mode of passion, always in a state of anxiety. And humans, by default nowadays, are born under the mode of passion. You have lower intelligence species, like uh, plants, like animals, carnivores, herbivores, they are generally born under the mode of passion and ignorance. There's only one animal known that is default born under the mode of goodness. And remember, these are three material modes. And that's the cow. The cow is born under the mode of goodness. All right? So these things we got to understand moving forward. The soul can be purified when it comes in contact with either the holy names of the Lord or... If it's fortunate enough, it could come across a pure devotee of the Lord. Pure devotee doesn't mean Hare Krishna. It means pure devotee. There are people who are living beyond this material conception of life. And because they are not under the influence of the modes, the three modes of material nature, they are only moved by love. So you can be incarnated in a demonic body and you come across the Lord, you can get purified. Because what we're purifying is not the body per se, we're purifying the spirit soul. Once the spirit soul is purified of material contamination, then likewise, the intelligence falls in line, the mind falls in line, and the body and the senses fall in line. You are not this body, you're a pure spirit soul. You're just contaminated by a different kind of material energy. Whether you're in a white body, black body, it's a prison suit. And we know what happens in prison, especially in, in, my, in my ethnicity. There's a phenomenon where there's a lot of black males who go to prison. Whether you call it, um, call it a scheme of the elites or the, the, the private prison corporation facility needs bodies for slavery, or you could say black people are just always involved in bad activities. That's besides the point. The point is that when they get in prison, they come in contact with the holy names of the Lord. Like Al-Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahmanir Rahim, Maliki Yawmid Deen, Iyakan, on and on and on. So we get in touch with the names of the Lord. Some people never read a Bible till they get in prison. Then they become 
top-notch devotees because it's the sincerity with which we approach the holy names is what has the effects. Malcolm X was born under demonic influences, activities. He was, you know, he was involved in a lot of stuff that wasn't upright. He went to prison. He came in touch with the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. And next thing you know, his soul became sufficiently purified to the point where it released his qualifications, his adhikari as a teacher. So by coming in contact with the holy names, Malcolm X was purified to make a name for himself for a long time. So this is the fact. What we want to do is spread the Hare Krishna mantra so it affects you from the soul level. That way, whether you're an animal, plant, beast, dog, demon, God, the holy name satisfies all things because it is the supreme sacrifice. So once again, let's try to get up over of these bodily conceptions, bodily positions, and no, that does not mean to forget your you're in a Chinese body, or I'm in a white body, or I'm in a black body, but because I'm Hare Krishna, I'm not going to read no black history, and I'm not going to look at Africa, because I'm in a European body, but I'm Hare Krishna, I'm not, I'm going to act like the lineages of kings didn't exist, and because I'm Asian, I'm going to forget all of these things that I learned because I'm Hare Krishna, no, 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 it is all encompassing, Krishna meets you at your own level. What we're trying to say is that identify each individual by their energy field and their activities. That's what determines the difference between a demon and a devotee. Because you had, you had many demonic kings who became pure devotees of the Lord. And likewise, you had many people born of high birth. Ajamila was one from the sixth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Ajamila was one. He was born of high birth and he went down into demonic life. And he was saved at the bell because he called the holy names Narayana when he was dying. So let's, let's get up off these bodily concepts. Let's start treating people and accepting people as the soul. And another thing, yesterday was the appearance day of Vamana Dave. I'd like to share this with you. If you read the Srimad Bhagavatam, the eighth canto, it'll tell you in the early verses that Vamana was a, a dwarf incarnation of God and he was born blackish. He appeared blackish. Okay, let's keep it 100. If God's color don't matter, then we shouldn't have a problem with keeping it as it is. Then you go down to the 24th, 25th verse, it describes that he also had matted locks of hair. So we have an incarnation of God that was not only definitely blackish, but it also had dreadlocks. I like to say Hare Krishna. Y'all be good, all right? Peace.